Today's video is brought to you by Techron, and the trip that you're going to see in today's video is the tail end of a 3,000 mile journey from Washington through Death Valley, through Nevada, through Idaho, and back to Washington. The last thing that I want on a trip like this is a dirty fuel injector or poor fuel economy just caused by dirty fuel that I pick up in all these random towns on a big trip. My tow rig and my Land Rover both repeatedly got Techron throughout this trip to give me cheap peace of mind and to keep these toys running exactly as they should. If you're interested in any of the Techron fuel system products, make sure you click the links in the description of this video. Today on Dirt Lifestyle, we're gonna go to Idaho to do a little bit of wheeling with friends and search for some really deep snow. Spoiler alert, we don't really find any deep snow, but we do find amazing views, and at the end, we find some pretty sweet rock crawling. Today on Dirt Lifestyle, we are hunting snow. I'm with my friend Alan from Yankum Ropes. I shot him a text a few weeks ago. It's like, hey man, you wanna to get together and do some wheeling with a couple of your buddies? A couple of his buddies showed up. The whole state, <laughs> the yep. The whole state. <laughs> so who are these people? These are everybody from uh, the Southern Idaho Off-Road Association. These guys are my family. Um, we do a lot of wheeling and they're very inclusive and, and um, they welcomed us in when we just had a stock, humble little Land Cruiser, so. So inclusive, they're gonna include a Washingtonian this time. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> We're going up into the South Hills. Um, it's a big wilderness area. It's a great place to get lost and hopefully it's snowing up there. We all met up at Yankum Ropes headquarters here in Burley, but we're gonna slowly work our way up to a place called Oakley Reservoir. And from there, Alan's gonna direct us into the mountains so we can hopefully find a little bit of snow. being the out of town or in a group and leaving it an all wheel drive instead of four wheel drive and then getting stuck on what is essentially the first obstacle. But at least after a little bit of spotting from Alan, I was able to figure out what's going on and work our way back onto the trail. Uh, I was telling him yesterday how similar our rigs are. He's got a, a Land Cruiser on 37s. I got a Land Rover on 37s. And they're um, when they're next to each other, they're very similar in size. They're uh, super comparable, I think. Um, I, would, I would say that I'm a little jealous of the one tons. I think I'm. I think I've got weak ankles on mine. Just weak there. ankles. That's <laughs> one way to put it. Yeah, the one tons are nice touch on this for sure. Um, but I would trust a Land Cruiser a lot more on a long trip. This this drivetrain is clapped out. But uh, um, there's there's something it, you know you know tapping on the inside of the hood, just, yeah. just saying hey remember me. Yeah, there's a rod or something that's knocking to let you know that it's like hey is anybody home? It's like no I, I hear you, I hear you. I'll get to you eventually. But hey, I you know what this thing this is awesome. There's there's no nothing surpasses the design the aesthetic of this rig uh, it drives really well they should have i mean i don't know why they didn't release it with one tons out of the uh 
from the factory? factory. <laughs> yeah. If so, this this would have dominated, absolutely dominated the market in the overland rock crawling. That, where that the two of them kind of meet. Yeah. You know? And and you know you put what you put thirty sevens on an overlander. Yeah. Yeah. You're kind of committing a cardinal sin to some people. I I, I did get a lot of comments about that actually. Thirty sevens are too big for overlander, but. I'm a meathead turned overlander, so 37s to me are like a perfect entry level tire. <laughs> well, they make the ride so soft. Yeah, exactly. They're just, I mean, you just float like a Cadillac when you're down to 12 pounds. And... A lot of confidence over the rocky stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was just, I was curious on uh, Alan's. This is the first time I've had someone drive this other than my wife, and um, so I get to film and he gets to drive. I'm and... number two. Like I, so number after, two. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Honored. <laughs> so we're starting to see snow, little bits here and there on the ground. We're just gonna continue to climb up and hopefully we see some good stuff. As we worked our way up in the elevation, you could clearly see that winter is just right on the edge of bursting to life up here. We're just maybe a week or two away from this being extremely deep snow. I'm a little bit bummed that it's not extremely deep snow right now, but that's okay. This is still an amazing place. The views are insane. And this is another example of what is so cool about making these videos, is I find myself in places that I would have never gone to otherwise. The snow that we could find was only a few inches, so we decided to have lunch at an old ski resort and consider our options. Alan and Cody knew of a sweet spot that we could go to that was only a couple hours away. It's supposed to have some pretty good rock crawling, which for me is perfect because I have yet to test this landward discovery on some decent rocks. There was no deep snow. I was promised deep snow. <laughs> so we started talking about it. I was like, well, is there any rocks? And they're like, yes, there's killer rocks. So we uh, teleported over here. We've got probably got like half an hour of daylight left. Um, but I want to play around the rocks here. My friend Cody is who brought us here. What is this place called? This is uh, right where we're at is Devil's Perch. A lot of locals call it. Devil's Marseille. Perch, yeah. Idaho. So if you wanted to come here, you'd look up Devil's Perch on uh, you'd, Google. You'd look up Twin Falls, Idaho, mm. and then just go to the other side of the canyon, and there you are. Oh, there's, got it. A, there's no like geographical name, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> locals call it Devil's Perch. Yes. So we're gonna play around Devil's Perch and try not to. Uh, I don't want to say the R word. Try not to roll. One, two, three, four. Got to find a way if you want to go. Got to find a way if you want to. If you 
Those of you that followed this build know that I didn't intend on building this Discovery for rock crawl, but I did want something that I could have all of my camping gear in and on and could also do some rocks from time to time if the trails got a little nasty. Today was just, let's go have some fun. I've got a tool that in theory could do it. And so let's push it and see how well this is going to do on the rocks. All in all, I'm pretty pleased. Now, our group started pretty big at the end of the day. I think we were like 21 plus vehicles. And then once we stopped for lunch, we got to about half of that, so around 10. And then once we got to the actual rocks on this rock crawling portion, we're down to three. And as the sun went down, this made for a pretty spectacular backdrop for us to finish up the day and work ourselves through this rock section. <laughs> Take three. Thank you guys. This was awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm I'm happy that the disco is you know all in one piece still. I think the Land Cruiser and the uh, Discovery both need to get together in the future. Definitely. Very comparably built, and uh, this was outstanding. I'm coming back here to visit Cody to do some real rock crawling with the TJ when it's done. And uh, thank you, Idaho. Everyone who helped today. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. That's a wrap. Ha, 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 ha.